WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. The race for the presidency now well underway. And right now it looks like Donald Trump and Joe Biden could face off in a rematch. But a former leader here in Charlotte and across North Carolina says more options are needed. Former Republican Governor Pat McCrory now joining an organization looking at possibly adding a third option unity ticket to the ballot. Joining us now, the former Charlotte mayor, former North Carolina governor as well, Pat McCrory. I, I also think he was one of the original guests on Flashpoint as well, going back many, many years ago. Uh, he's now the Actually national co-host co yeah. co -host as, as well, I, I, yeah. I should say, yeah. uh, back in the day. He's now the, the national co-chair for the No Labels Movement. It's an effort to encourage common sense bipartisanship across America. Welcome back to Flashpoint, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Governor as well. Um, so Thanks for having me. Bring us up to speed. For the past year, you've been sort of out of the fray of day-to-day of -day public life. Has the last year given you a, a fresh perspective on things? I think January 6th gave me a fresh perspective on this because I'm concerned that we have both left and right anarchists who um, I had to deal with when I was governor with the Charlotte riots in 2016 who would rather have anarchy than civility. And I think the civility has got to return back to politics where we're talking to each other as opposed to talking across each other. And I'm very concerned that our current political structure is not dealing with today's problems and kicking them down the road for the next generation. And the biggest concern, and one of the reasons I joined No Labels, is because 60% of the people of America do not like or do not want to select from the current front runners of the Democratic or Republican Party. Um, and we've never had that before in American history, or at least in my lifetime. You know, usually about 40% of the people do not like the leading contenders or the, the selectees of the two major parties. But over 60% of people saying we don't want Trump or Biden is numbers we've never seen before. And I think there's kind of an arrogance among the two parties that we have to select or concur with whoever they select. And I don't think that's right for our nation. So uh, if that those numbers continue after Super Tuesday, we're going to have uh, a no labels ballot on all 50 states, including North Carolina, and have another option for the people of our state and the people of our country. I hope between now and then, however, the two parties will align more with what the American people want regarding a selection of uh, who might happen. And I say that as a Republican, I'm not changing parties, and I think we've got some great candidates. But uh, if Trump and Biden are on the ticket, uh, most people don't want either one of them. And that's not, that means that I think the two parties are losing touch with the American people. And um, that's not good for America. Uh, so, so let's go over how this would work, um, how with the mm -hmm. sort of no labels sort of method is you mentioned after Super Tuesday, um, if it's Trump and Biden, you all would nominate sort of a unity ticket that would have one moderate Democrat, one moderate Republican, and then you would put forward this sort of unity ticket. Um, well, I would say it's going to be most likely one Republican and one Democrat who will work together and understand that uh, when you have a divided nation, you have to work together. You know, this this term moderate or conservative or liberal, I'm, I'm, I'm a Republican conservative, but on some issues I've been called a rhino and other issues, the left has called me a, a right wing extremist. And these labels are being thrown around so much and so recklessly by political parties and the media with all due respect that uh, it's not letting us work together when there is division. Even without division, we're not working together. When one party is in control, we don't come to solutions for fear of being called a rhino or a right wing or left wing extremist because we're more afraid of the primaries than we are the general election. Do you think this person, this ticket would really stand a chance? Critics say this person, this ticket could just be a spoiler and still throw it one way or the other to either Mr. Trump or Mr. Biden. Um, do you see we're it that gonna way? Get, we're not going to We're not going to get into it if it's a spoiler. Uh, the two parties want to spread the rumor uh, that it's going to be a spoiler when, in fact, they might be the spoiler because they selected two candidates that are not satisfactory to the majority of people. So after uh, Super Tuesday, we'll do polling. And if there is a good chance now, we're not going to get the majority of the vote, but it's winner take all, just like we have in the primaries. Um, 
in uh, a ticket that we think can win. And only then would I agree to continue as uh, as a co-chairman of this uh, really good group of people that I'm impressed with. Who would have imagined that I'd be joining forces with Ben Chavis, who served seven years in prison for a crime he didn't commit in Wilmington, North Carolina. And, I, you know, I find out he and I agree on a lot of issues. We just never talk to each other. And we're trying to show we can be civil to each other where we agree and where we disagree. I think that's, I think that's how most Americans are. Um, and, and I think you, you blame the media but I think you also will acknowledge that that compromise is not exactly rewarded in our uh, legislative hallways. I mean, all you got to do is look at last week. It's actually not. Yeah, look at, it's look, not rewarded by the parties, by the legislature, or by the media at times. I'm having. I had some more left wing media interview me yesterday, and they just fought me. Well, you're. This can't happen because a lot of people want the status quo of the current system, which is failing. It's failing America right now. And I mean, we've never had numbers where so many people are, uh, don't think the direction of America is going in the right way. How, how do you size up what happened last week, uh, last weekend at the GOP convention here uh, in North Carolina? Tom Tillis was censored uh, for his moderate views on some social issues. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, I joined Governor, former Governor Jim Martin in speaking against the censor. It's uh, it's ridiculous. Tom, by the way, is a very conservative guy. He and I initiated some of the most conservative tax cuts and other policy in North Carolina history that have worked um, in the long term. And uh, Tom, I think, is doing a good job. I don't agree with Tom and everything, but just because you don't agree with someone, you don't cancel them. Here, here, I, I hate, I, I so disagree with the cancel culture of the left and here are the rights trying to cancel Tom Tillis and they ironically left out all other members of the delegation that, that voted with Tom. So I think there's a little more politics behind this regarding possibly the 26th Senate election. <laughs> Still to come here on Flashpoint, the former governor weighing in on President Trump's arraignment this week. Why he says it might just fuel Trump's candidacy.